to create a rosette to match the one around the sound hole on the damaged ukulele. After disassembling the body of the old ukulele, I made a detailed set of drawings as a guide for constructing the new parts. I will also use this set of drawings on my next ukulele, where I will make all of the parts to include the neck, headstock, and fretboard. I am taking the location of the center of the sound hole off of the set of drawings and transferring it to the blank sound board. I will then drill a hole that I will use as a center reference for making the inlays for the rosette. This is so we can put the center hole here. We want to match this here. And how do we do that? We use this. I will scribe the edges of the inlays so with a tool here. illustrated in this book. Details about the book are in the description below. I have already cut out all of the parts. So I have a small razor and I have the screws and washers needed. It is ready to assemble. I am adding the tape to protect the surface of the soundboard. If I do this correctly, it will also protect the soundboard from squeeze out when I'm gluing in the inlays. I start to scribe the first edge of the inlay slowly to establish the initial cut into the soundboard. Once that is set, I will go over the cut a few more times to make sure it is cut to the full depth for the entire circumference. I am marking the distance for each cut on the cutting tool. I can use the marks as a guide for the rosette on the next ukulele. I am on the last cut for the inlays. For the most part, the tape has stayed in place and should protect the soundboard from squeeze out. But first, I need to remove the material between each set of scribe lines to form the grooves where the inlays will go. Using a grinder, I modified an old screwdriver, turning it into a fine point chisel. It needed to be thin enough to cleanly remove the material between my scribe lines. It worked very well. I have finished removing the material for the inlays. I was careful not to chisel too deeply and to stay within the scribe lines. The grooves for the inlays look good and match the look of the old ukulele. I will use some salvaged monkey pod wood for the inlay material. I just need a couple of thin strips, one for each circle, and a spare.
I am back using the bending iron, but this time it is to form the thin strips of monkey pod wood into circles. I think I could have skipped this step since the strips are so thin, but it should be easier to set the inlays if I don't have to continually bend the wood strips while I am pressing them into the grooves. I am cutting each of the circular inlays to the necessary length. I will hide the seam where the two ends meet under the fretboard, but I still want to get it as tight as possible. I am using hide glue to set the inlays. If I have to make a repair later, I can heat the rosette and easily remove the inlays. This pull saw should cut cleanly and not mar the surface of the soundboard. I put down the tape as extra protection. Now, the same process for the other inlay. There are dark areas in the inlay where the hide glue is showing. This is because the inlays didn't seat completely into the grooves. I will have to remove the dark areas and put in new inlays. I want to limit how much repair work I do because chasing this mistake could damage the clean edges of the inlays. The hide glue is dry but soft. I can also see that what is left of the inlay wood is coming out of the grooves easily because there is only a sliver of wood still there. The next time I do inlays, I will put in the extra work necessary to make sure they are thin enough to seat completely in the groove. I will also make sure the depth of the groove is consistent for the entire circumference.
This time I will use a block plane and scraper to remove the excess inlay material. For the second repair, I am using a modern wood glue. I want to see the difference between the dark, slow-drying hide glue and the light, faster-drying wood glue. I wish I still had the painter's tape on the soundboard to catch the glue squeeze out. The time it would have taken to accurately trim the masking tape to match the work area was too long, and I was concerned that I might do further damage to the edges of the inlays. I can clean up the excess with final sanding. That does it for this episode. All we were able to do for this episode was to put the inlay in for the rosette. I learned a couple lessons here. First of all, the white glue is better than the hide glue. I used the hide glue because if there was any need for a future repair, I could go in and use the heat gun, remove the inlays, and maybe make the repairs. But the hide glue is less forgiving, and any gaps are easily seen because of the dark glue whereas the white glue doesn't show as much, and also it dries quicker, and I was able to finish up the rosette much quicker. For next time, we're gonna take this bracing off and put it on the back of our new soundboard. It should be a quick and easy process. If we can get all of this taken off, added to here, and also get the bracing put on the backboard, and we can get the entire sound box put together. If you like this video, Please give it a thumbs up.
And if you want to get notifications for the next video that comes out, please subscribe.